play something he says. Let's turn together and sing over on page 412, 412, let's sing together. My heart was distressed with Jehovah's red frown, and lo, in the pit where my sins dragged me down, I cried to the Lord. solid rock to stay he puts a song in my happy soul today a song of praise hallelujah now folks we've done this song enough times I shouldn't have to explain those extra words that some of you are looking for they're not there okay he brought me out of the what deep miry clay he set my feet on the what Solid rock to stay. He puts a song in my what? Happy soul today. A song of praise. Hallelujah. On the second verse. He placed me upon the strong rock by his side. My steps were established and here I'll abide. No danger of falling while here I remain. But stand by his grace until the crown I gain. He brought me out of the deep miry clay. He set my feet on the solid rock to stay. He puts a song in my happy soul today. A song of praise. Hallelujah. He gave me a song was a new song of praise by day and by night his sweet notes i will raise my heart's overflowing i'm happy and free i'll praise my redeemer who has rescued me he brought me out of the deep miry clay he set my feet on the solid rock to stay he puts a song in my happy soul today, a song of praise, hallelujah. I'll sing of his wonderful mercy to me. I'll praise him till all men his goodness shall see. I'll sing of salvation at home and abroad till men shall hear the truth and trust in God. He brought me out of the deep miry clay. He set my feet on the solid rock to stay. He puts a song in my happy soul today. 
a song of praise. Hallelujah. Over on 423. 423. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. I have found his grace is all complete. He supplieth every need. While I sit and learn at Jesus' feet, I am free, yes, free indeed. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, oh, the half has never yet been told i have found the pleasure i once craved it is joy and peace within what a wondrous blessing i am safe from the awful gulf of sin it is joy unspeakable and full of glory full of glory full of glory it is joy unspeakable and full of glory oh the half has never yet been told i have found that hope so bright and clear living in the realm of grace oh the savior's presence is so near I can see his smiling face. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Oh, the half has never yet been told. I have found the joy no tongue can tell. How its waves of glory roll. It is like a great or flowing well springing up within my soul. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, oh, the half has never yet been told do you have the joy of the lord in your heart i tell you what that's something great something we can testify to something else we can all testify tonight is that god is so good aren't you glad tonight that we serve a good god let's sing that little chorus together God is so good, God is so good, God is so good, He's so good to me, I love Him so. I love him so, I love him so, he's so good to me. God answers prayer, God answers prayer, God answers so good to me and God is so good God is so good God is so good he's so good to Father, tonight we are grateful that we serve a good God. 
You are better to us than we'll ever deserve. And tonight we just want to praise you. As the psalmist David said, truly God is good. You've been so good to us. You've supplied our needs. You've met us at the points when we didn't know that we could keep going on. And you were there for us. You've met us in those low valleys when we were going through times of darkness and despair. You've met us on the mountaintops when things were going good. Father, you've been with us and you have been to us all that we've needed you to be. We can say without a shadow of a doubt tonight that the God that we serve has never failed us, never disappointed us, never let us down. And Father, tonight we pray that as we think of your goodness, Father, would you just remind us in our hearts and in our minds about how good you've been to us. And Father, may our hearts be filled with praise for you and adoration for you. Father, it's been a great day in your house today. And Father, we pray that as this evening goes on, that you would just continue to meet with us. You'd be with Pastor Mike as he brings the bread of life to us and shares what God has laid on his heart. Father, everything that's said and done here tonight is not for us, it's not for our glory. May all praise, honor, and glory go to the King of kings and Lord of lords. For you tell us in your word that if Jesus is lifted up, He'll draw everyone to him. Draw us close to you. And Father, once again, we want to just say thank you for being such a good God and for loving us. And for all that you're going to do, we'll thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Pastor Mike, the floor is yours. You get this much time. I figure if we give you this much time, you'll be done by about 8 o'clock. Pray for Pastor Mike as he comes to share. Preacher asked me if I needed the cordless mic or if I was going to stand behind the pulpit, and I said, I don't know, and I don't know. It's an honor to be with you tonight. I feel so unworthy to speak before anybody. I'm going to tell you a short story. I'm, I'm one of those weird people that, that I, I like Memorial Day. I like all the things that go with it. But every Memorial Day, I get opportunity, I take opportunity to think a lot about my mother. And my ordination was December the 12th, 1999. Mom came down for the ordination, and they did all the things, and laid on hands, and we had prayer and the songs, and the preacher preached, and we got ready at the end, and they normally would let the, or have the preacher that was being ordained, he would have the closing prayer. Mom was there, and Dad had died a few years before. I saw Mom, and I love my mom, and nobody else may like me, but my mother loves me. <laughs> I like that. So I said, Mom, how about having the closing prayer today? She prayed, and she's walking out the back, and I was thanking the folks for being there. And she says, oh, Mikey, I said, if I'd known you was going to ask me to pray, I'd have prayed a better prayer. And that's just how Mom was. I had a call to go up to another church that night and preach. They were having some trouble in the church, and they wanted me to do a message on church harmony and the fact that we were to work together and to be together, to serve together in the, in the harmony and the quality of God. It seemed like the church had forgotten some of those rules, and I did. And that, back in those days, we didn't have cell phones. I'll tell you how old I am. And we didn't have regular answering machines. We had these boxes, and you had to hit a button, rewind, and hit another button, and it played it. And that night, 
I got home and nobody called me on Sunday night. They, they knew that I was pastor. And so I preached and we went to McDonald's and had one of those, I think they were a dollar even then, ice cream cones. And my light was blinking when I got home. And I hit the button. And it was my brother from Oak Hill. And he says, Mikey, come to the Oak Hill Hospital and identify mom. She died. What a weird message to leave for somebody. And it broke my heart and I couldn't believe it. And we, of course, fairly quickly went to Oak Hill and they, they already knew who it was and everything. Bruce just got a, a bit messed up. But I walked into that room. I'm going to step over here just for a second. I walked into that room where mom was. And, and I got to tell you, such sweet peace in that room, knowing that my mother was a believer, knowing that she'll spend eternity with God. And when I think of Memorial Day, I think about mom and that day. And I know it sounds stupid, but I was so blessed to have that thought with my mother on that day. So, to mom tonight. I believe, I believe the world is in a mess. I promised Randy I wouldn't preach Democrat and Republican tonight, and I'm not. I believe that things are churning. I believe that there's a gigantic spiritual warfare going on that we don't talk nearly about as believers in the church. Now, I want to tell you, I'm proud to be an American. I love America, but I'm ashamed of some of the things our country has become. Now, please don't misunderstand that. I, I looked at the news, and I still see people trying to get into America because the other countries are so much worse. Right? Think, think about that for just a moment. But it seems like that, that over the years that we've lost our focus and our vision for God. And, and I go back, and I think about when America was established, and, and, and people wanted to have religious freedom, and, and they, they just worshiped God, and they loved God. Everybody, everybody wasn't perfect, and, and they were different, and all, oh, I get that. But they wanted a place, and God blessed that day, before even, the United States of America. We're so blessed to live in this country that we're making such a mess out of. I love the people that have served in the military. Today, this weekend, and I'll read some scripture in a minute, we celebrate Memorial Day. It's a day first observed May, I got to look this, May 30th, 1868, to honor those who died in the Civil War. My grandson one time told me that I was old enough to have fought in the Civil War. I didn't really think too much of that. He said, well, Papa, your hair's white. That, that hurt, too. And then over the years, it got to where we were celebrating fallen soldiers from the other wars. And then after a while, it got to where we were celebrating and, and, and thinking about those that had died before. And nothing's wrong with any of that. But I'm, I'm going to present a little bit of a military slant tonight, which I don't so often do. But Memorial Day, we think about all those memories of all of those soldiers, all their families that, that have gone on those that are fighting today, but we also think about my mother, my father, and the other loved ones we have, and that's healthy. Memories are good. Some memories are bad. Excuse me. We need to do well to remember the sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice that so many have made. My father fought in World War II along with his, two of his other brothers, and they were in different units. They were all in the Army, and, and one day, and I've got a picture of it somewhere, and one day in the army, they inadvertently were on the same hilltop together and had a chance to spend about 15 minutes with each other. What a grand, what a grand time that was. There have been hundreds of thousands of great soldiers in this country. Some of them aren't, aren't so great. And, and I want to caution you. When we think about the military folks, we need to understand women are fighting right alongside the men today. I got one amen. They're carrying that flag, okay? While we honor the dead throughout America's history, another great soldier comes to mind. And that soldier is Jesus Christ. Stand with me and turn to 2 Timothy. Chapter 2. Second Timothy, chapter 2, verses 3 and 4 to start with. 
see a couple still turning. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warth entangled himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Go to chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. We hear this so many times at funerals. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them that love his appearing. Father, we, we love your word. God, we, we ask that it stand tonight in front of everything that's said, everything that's done. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. I believe that, that, well, I know that Satan knows that he loses. In the end, Satan loses. That's a place for amen. That, that means I want you all to say amen. Say, I'm going to get some little cards. Satan knows he loses, right? And, 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 and the church needs to understand that he loses too. And sometimes I'm afraid, I thought about this on the way down, so I had to put the first of the message so I don't forget it. Sometimes I think because we know we win, we get lazy and don't stand as hard and strong and engage in the fight against Satan as we ought to. Now Satan's still out there fighting. There's a spiritual warfare going on, and we want to ignore it. And and. I don't understand that. I don't understand how this country was so great and how we've let so much go wrong. And I told the pastor, I'm not going to talk Democrat and Republican tonight, but I'm going to talk about God tonight. We need to put God first in our country. We need to see God first in our country. Later in this service, we'll talk a little bit about another memorial, and we'll come to that when we call in mind the, the death, burial, and excuse me, resurrection return of the Lord Jesus. Jesus was a good soldier. Thank you. Jesus was a good soldier. <sighs> Even when we, when we honor our war dead and all, excuse me, there's another great group of soldiers that come to our mind today, and that's the Christians, Christ army. And I will share with you, and I'm sure some of you have been Christians a long, long time, that, that you've been called part of God's army before. There's even some songs about that. But I'm, I'm proud to be in God's army. How about you? Raise your hand. Are you proud to be in God's army? Did you enlist? Are you ready? That's a good thing to be, isn't it? I'm in God's army. Give God a big hand clap. All right. And that's good. One day, one day, our lives will be over. I put this statement in here. The last year and a half has been really tough. I I got the pacemaker and had no idea there was anything wrong. I got COVID and didn't have any idea how bad it was and everything. One day, every person in this room will be a memory. I pray that it's a memory of Jesus. I stopped on my, on my way down tonight. I thought I was going to be late. There's two young, two young ladies that, that live at the corner of the road. And, and as usual, Bill, I'm late everywhere I go. Thinking I'm going to have to speed coming down the road. And I've been wanting an opportunity to talk to these, to these two, two people for a while. And they're, they're always in and they're, oh, well, I don't want to say that. They're always, they're always in the house. I never see them. And they were outside today. I said, woo! I stopped my car right in the middle of the road. I left the, the, the door open. I go out and, and I told them who I was again. That's the second time. I told them I was going to church and I invited them to church. They didn't come. I didn't have much expectation of them coming, but I tell you what, we've got to put the gospel out to everybody. We don't have the right to prejudge. Judgment is God's business. Okay. Go pray for them. They had some issues. They told me they did. One day our lives will be over. One day we'll be a memory. When it comes time for you and I to leave this world, what kind of legacy will we leave? I think that's a question we need to, to ask ourselves as we're, we're in this, this army with God. And think, what kind of legacy? Well, people will remember what kind of a person you were. I remember I hadn't been, I hadn't, hadn't started going to church. Matter of fact, I didn't like anything about church. And, and I worked at a place, and there was this guy I didn't like very much. Anybody, you ever know anybody you didn't like very much? Not a place for amen. 
You did good. Y'all did good. You're going to make it here tonight. And I really didn't like this guy. And he had a, he had a wreck and he hit a telephone pole. And a bunch of the people, nobody liked him. A bunch of the people decided they were going to, going to go to the funeral home to, for the viewing. They come to me and one said, aren't you going to go with us? I said, no, I didn't like him while I was alive. Why would I like him now? Think about that for a minute. What kind of legacy are we going to live? Will people know that we serve Jesus? Will they know that we walked after Jesus and all? What kind, what kind of person will they, will they remember us as a soldier of the cross? I want people, when they think about me more than anything else, to think about Jesus. That's really what counts. All the, all the stuff, all the things I've been involved in life, who I'm married to, my, my checking account, the kind of car I drive, all this doesn't matter. What matters is that my sins are forgiven, that your sins are forgiven, and I'm in the army of God. And isn't it good that we're in that army? Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. The time to think about these things is now. For after I die, I'm not going to think about them. If you're going, it's going to be too late. As Paul neared the end of his life, living in a Roman prison, he had his friend, Timothy. Y'all have heard of Timothy. I read, read about him. Young preacher. Needed some help. We need to help our young preachers. We need to help these old preachers too sometimes and all. But from the cell, the apostle Paul took steps to, be, to know and to ensure that he'd be remembered as a good soldier of the cross. He reached out to Timothy. He took time to write to him and to write some letters to him and give him the secret for being a good soldier. Paul wanted Timothy, he wanted him to have a good, a good preaching career, a good Christian, I'm using words we use today, a good Christian career, a good life and everything. And, and he knew that Timothy was young in the faith. He was a young man, and he wouldn't exactly know how to do it. I got, I got some grandkids that don't know how to do much of anything but turn on an Xbox. A couple of you grinned. Y'all grinned over there, but I won't tell anybody, okay? All right. But we we're losing so many, so many of the skills and all. Oh. He took time to write him, and I'd like for us to think about this this morning. And these five thoughts aren't mine, but they're five thoughts, five characteristics for us to be good soldiers for the Lord. Chapter 2, verse 3 says, The first step is to join the army. Um, I was listening to a man's testimony this morning, and, and he had gotten drafted, and, and he was on his way in the bus to, the, to, the, uh, to his basic training, his advanced individual training, and he told me where he was going in his testimony. I don't remember where. And said he was in that bus and a bunch of other people, and, and they were going down the road. And actually, he was going in the Marines, and he was going to go to Paris Island. That bus had gotten about halfway there. The bus stopped, turned around, and went the other way. They couldn't figure out what was going on. They didn't tell him anything. The bus was just going the other way. So he gets back and they found out that Nixon had just stopped the draft. Today, it's an all-volunteer army in the United States. The army of Christ is an all-volunteer army. God doesn't make us join. As great a speaker as Randy is, as much as he can take a whip and whip it, as much as he can do all these things, he can't make us join God's army, can he? We have to accept Jesus as our Savior to be a member of the army of God, to, en to enlist. And I enlisted. No one can be a soldier till they first get into the army. Now, when, when, when I joined the army, when other people joined the army, there were things that you had to do. I believe, I, I don't believe, I do believe, I don't believe. When you get old, you say that kind of stuff often. I don't believe you get to come and just don't do anything else. I think there's more to it than just coming up, shaking a preacher's hand, and saying, I love Jesus, and going off and doing your merry thing. The Bible teaches us different than that. Preachers preach different than that. We're to walk after, follow after, serve Jesus. We're to pray. We're to read the Bible. And I believe that church attendance, y'all are here, so y'all don't have to listen to this part. I believe that church attendance is part of it also. But we've gotten to where we don't teach that stuff so much anymore. People are just so anxious to get somebody to say, I have somebody saved. They don't spend the time nurturing them. God, and Paul nurtured Timothy, told Timothy what he had to do and how he had to do it. We need to get back to teaching people about what the Bible expects. Thus saith the Lord what the Bible expects this morning. It's only 
the only way that we can be a soldier and get in the army is after receiving Jesus as our Savior. Shared with you too many times about how our sins were forgiven and how our lives were so mean and everything. And I was really a soldier for Satan. Now, it's tough to stand here and tell you, but I was a soldier for Satan. I wasn't doing anything for Jesus. It was all about Mike and well, the things that Satan would have me do and then do. And then one day, I accepted Jesus. I said, Father, forgive my sins. You said, Father, forgive my sins. And guess what? They were forgiven because God can't lie. And he said, if we confess our sins, what? I didn't hear you. What? He'll forgive us. Glory to his name. We become a member of his army there because he is now our savior. To refuse to, to follow orders is treason. It used to be in the military. It was a whole lot worse than it is now. It seems like now when somebody commits treason or betrays a secret, they get a slap on the wrist. When we're the Lord's army, we have the obligation of following him to the death. You got silent. That's good. So one, soldier's a follower. He's also, he's also faithful. Be seen in, here in his faith and endures hardship and doesn't quit. I'm, I'm amazed over the years, and if you talk to Bill or some of the other pastor, Pastor Randy, people quit coming to church for dumb reasons. Come on. They get mad at the preacher because he preached too long. Randy, as far as I'm concerned, you can preach a little longer. I didn't get any amens to that. <laughs> they get mad because somebody wanted a different color of carpet. I don't care what color it is. I want it to be worn. But we have silly reasons for not coming to church and quitting. And then COVID came. And I want to tell you what. I told you a while ago there's a spiritual warfare going on. I believe COVID is of Satan. I don't care if we think China made it or or. Somebody else made it. It's of Satan, and Satan has used that to battle the churches and to push people away from the church. And I'll tell you what, Satan can't make any person not go. He can make you sick. He can cause sickness and those things. We won't talk about that tonight. But people are, have chosen on their own to quit attending the church. I like being in church. I, I do. I, I like being in church, and I like being with God's people, and I like, I like seeing your smiles. The soldier understands that pain is a part of being in the Army or the Air Force. Well, maybe not so much the Air Force. The, the Marines and the Navy. Oh, it took a minute. The Marines are, are some of those. Sometimes pain is necessary with a believer. I was talking to somebody in church here this evening, and, 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 and I used this in my last message, and I, and I don't want to apologize. Just because that we're believers doesn't mean that everything's going to be good all the time. It doesn't even mean everything's going to be good most of the time, but what it does mean, God will provide a way through that. And, and sometimes we need to, to suffer and go through some stuff, and, and you know, we, we've gotten spoiled in America. We don't want to suffer. The other night before Cindy hurt her back, and remember to pray for Cindy her back, she fixed something. I didn't want it, didn't like it, didn't think it looked good. I couldn't pronounce it, some foreign name and everything. And she said, well, just go fix your bowl of cereal then. We've gotten spoiled. I should just eat. When I was a kid, we didn't have enough to eat. Pain is part of it. He talked about the priorities, and, and in the military you have priorities depending upon your rank. But the first priority is to please the commander because he's supposed to give you lawful orders right? Lawful orders. Notice a good soldier has no higher goal in his life than to please the superior. Our goal should be to please God, to please Jesus, to please the Holy Spirit. You got quiet. That should be our goal. We want to we wanna please everything else in life. We want to do this and we want to do that. God is what counts. The good soldier knows that anything that interferes with his performance in the military must be done away with. We need to be careful because Satan will take anything that he can and cause it to make a, a, a way in to where that we no longer serve God as good as we once did. We, we often say, well, Little League football calls it Little League baseball. 
Ah, the coaches didn't call it doing that. Satan caused it over the years. That's, that's not a, that not a coach's fault. Come on. Come on. Satan is doing this, and we just will put the blame where it is. He'll tap me from one end to the other. And then they have to practice guards the truth of the faith. You and I have a responsibility. I, I love everybody here. I think I know everybody now. Probably don't. But we have to guard the faith. Too many churches aren't teaching the Bible. They're teaching stuff out of the Bible. They're teaching stuff out of, out of self-help books and this and that. The Bible comes first. The Bible is God's word, and the Bible will stand, and the Bible has to, and the Bible will stand through the ages. You know what? There's a, there's a problem, though. Got to read it. Okay, I just had to get that in. There are some things that the good soldier has to be familiar with. One, he has to be familiar with the sound of the commander's voice. The way for us to get more familiar with the Lord's voice, spend more time listening to it. I, I don't know about y'all. I talk too much. I didn't get any. That's good. That was good. That was a good place to be silent. I don't listen enough. I, I, I have the radio on or the TV on or I'm doing something. I'm busy, I'm whatever, and I don't take t enough time to listen to God. How about you? I want to be familiar with with his voice, just like I was my commander's voice, just like I was with the general's voice. I want to know when God's talking that it's God. Because Satan will run some interference and he'll make us think some sayings are of God that aren't of God. We've got to be well versed in his word. We've got to be well, well used with the, Holy, with the Holy Spirit tonight. We do this by getting into God's word. And I, I love the conversation, some people that don't go to church. They say, well, well, has God ever spoken to you? I said, well, yeah, I, I talked to God, but he, has he ever spoken to you? I said, not with a loud, strong voice. Well, how can you know it's God then? Because we know, because we have faith. We don't hear much about faith. Do we know him when he speaks? I want to say I do, and I want to say you do. You wouldn't be here on a Sunday night. They got to be familiar with the skill of using their weapons, and you've heard you've heard at least three since I've been here studies or whatever on Ephesians six ten through eighteen about about the weapons for the spiritual warfare and everything. But we know you and I know that we're engaged in a warfare, and 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 we need to understand the the severity of that warfare. And he knows the only way to succeed in the fight is to be proficient with our weapons. My first went to in the military. It was a while before I went to basic training. And they gave me a 50 caliber, caliber machine gun. And I put it, I didn't put it together just right. Had a command sergeant major, he comes up to me, he says, private. You know who they're talking to when they say private, called, private, like, you know, okay, I got it. He says, I want you to spend all day, so I spent all day Saturday and all day Sunday taking that thing apart and putting it back together. We have to become familiar with our weapons so we now how, know how to use them. They have a thing called a headspace and timing gauge. The new ones don't have that anymore. If you don't set that thing just right, the weapon won't fire. It has to do with the recoil mechanism and those type things on it. So we need to make sure that our headspace and our timing is set just right for Jesus. We do that for step by saying his word, by praying and everything. We, we, we do well to learn the artist's spiritual warfare if we intend to meet the glory of God. Do you know that Satan comes to church sometimes? I heard some mumbling. Do you know that Satan comes to church sometimes? He does, and, and he brings some of those, some of those thoughts. And when, It had been so long ago. And I had a really hectic upcoming week and everything. A preacher preaching a good sermon, and I'm sitting there thinking, I've got to do this and I've got to do that. And I had to force myself to pay attention. You ever do that? And we have to practice to pay attention. It's, it's, you, I, I, I think we all do that. What are you saying, Mike? We've got to work on this warfare thing. I think that when we was in basic training AIT, we had to guard our post, and we had the general orders, and we had to march or walk around. I, I marched around an empty building for one whole night out in the middle of nowhere. I don't know why they want me to guard that building. It wasn't worth anything, but I guarded it. So I could practice 
to be ready when the real thing comes. Larry, you're grinning. You know what I'm talking about. So I can so you practice so you can be ready when the real things come. You get used to that. You get used to the silence and everything. We need to practice it all. We need to get skill in using our weapons. We need to have skill in using the Bible. Not against people, but to show people God's love because he says the greatest commandment is to love one another. We've got to be familiar with the strategy of the enemy. 2 Corinthians 11 talks about that. We know the good soldier, you and I know, that the enemy is ever active. Satan never rests. He may back off. He's always trying to find that, that most vulnerable point you have, the place where he can most attack him. But I'm a soldier. I've been trained. And guess what? God's on my side. Get behind me, Satan. Now, I'm going to get a little bit off the message today, and I'll try to tell this to where it makes sense. I, I don't do plumbing stuff well. And my back is stiff and my legs hurt and bending and getting contortion to get to the back of a commode is awful. So we had that little flapper thing, they call it, and one of our commodes start leaking. I'm looking at that thing saying, I guess I got to. Guess I got to. Took the lid off. And it wasn't the kind they had when I was a committed kid. It was some kind of a special thing that had some other special thing that had something else. I don't even know what it was. I had to go down to Gresham's to get the replacement part. So I get it. I had to read the instructions. Those things are usually pretty easy. Just take those two little things off and drop that little thing there and you got it. Y'all understood all that? Okay. So I get home and it wasn't going on right and, and things weren't going just right. And I turned around and that, that room was empty. And I said, get behind me, Satan. You see, anything that the enemy can use against us to cause us not to have a good mind, not to have a sound mind, not to have a calm mind, he will take that and he'll use that to stir us up, which pushes part of the space we have in our hearts for Christ away. I finally got it fixed. We've got to know the enemy's strategy. We know that, that the enemy is shrewd. The military has a session called intelligence, and, and some people say well, that can't be right with the military. But they have something called intelligence. Their whole plan, they, they look at the weather and this and that to know what the weather is going to be. And then they also look at the enemy, what they've done in the past, at the, the history of the enemy and those kind of things. We know what Satan's going to do. We don't know when he's going to do it. But all we have to do is read all the examples in times past, how, how David lusted, Sodom and Gomorrah, we know those things are wrong, and we know that God will punish, and we know that how Satan will act and cause those things to come to the front. Don't we? Don't we? Then we need to be prepared for it and be strong against it and all. But we know the Lord is there to help us, according to Hebrews 13, 15. We know that regardless of the trap, God will make a way of escape. Good soldier's a fighter. You ever feel like just get real tired and want to lay down and not do so much? People do. Paul says that a good soldier is determined. I want to go all the way with Jesus. There's a song, I've come too far to turn back now. You ever hear that song? I've come too far to turn back now. Get behind me, Satan. I want to walk with God. I want to walk with Jesus. Pastor and I were talking briefly when we started. Everything. We're going to make mistakes, but aren't you thankful for grace? Aren't you thankful that when we mess up, God will forgive us? To ask him. So does determine he doesn't retreat in the face of the enemy. He doesn't run from a fight. In fact, we need to go to God's word. We need to go to our weapons. We need to do more and more for God. Uh, and Kathy, I, don't, I'm, I singled you out last time. I loved your Sunday school class. Uh, I've struggled a whole lot with Isaiah, and you've done a, a lot there to bring it forth better than my professor did. And I'm, I'm dead serious. We go to Sunday school so we can learn how to stand against Satan. We come to church so we can learn how to stand against Satan and make it through our living. And part of making it through living is standing against Satan. It's time we stood up for God. We gotta stand the ground and fight the battle. The battle will be over someday. 
Many Christian soldiers have dropped out of the battle. When I was making my notes, I thought about so many people that I've known that, that went to church for a season for a while. And for whatever reason. I've known, I've known pastors. I was paying, helping paint a building one time at a church camp. It was next to another pastor, and he said, he said, Pastor Mike, I, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quit preaching. I won't call, try not to call his name. I said, well, why would you do that? I said, I just, I just feel like I need to quit preaching. I said, well, why are you preaching? When you're called of God? He said, no, my dad was a preacher, and I thought I'd be a preacher because my dad was. To be a preacher, you need to be called of God. But guess what? To be a worker, you've got to be called of God to be. As soon as I think about these little kids and everything, you've got to be called to do that stuff. You've got to be called. And I thank God for people that are called. So many have dropped out of the battle. We need not be in that number to drop out because we've got God. All his glory, all his might, everything of God's is on our side. I think a good soldier is driven, have a purpose. They, they talk about morale. I've been in some churches. I was telling, I guess, Debbie a while I go. Sometimes you go in a church and nobody smiles. You ever been in a church like that? Not our church. I'm glad. It's just like you come in and nobody wants to say anything. Everybody's kind of, I don't want to be a part of something like that. You don't have any, in the military terminology, any morale. You see, with God, we have the power of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will lift us up. doesn't mean we don't have, uh, that we don't have some bad days. We do. It doesn't mean we smile all the time because sometimes things are tough. Sometimes things are hard. I get blessed, and, and tears come. Tears come easier for me than a shout. Good soldier knows that the battle doesn't run according to our time frame. I, I can't speak for most of y'all tonight. I want things done when I want them done. Kathy, you laughed. <laughs> anybody else? Anybody else like that? I want them done when I want them done. I mean, if if we're going to do something, let's do it now. Let's get it over with. When when I had COVID. They told me I was dying. Doctor went out of the room. They made Cindy go out and sign some papers. Nurse went out of the room. My prayer was, God, I need you. I need you more than I've ever needed you. I need you now, God. Would you come now? And I've never put a time limit on God. I needed him then. We, we operate according to time frames. Nurse come back in a little bit. I said, what happened to you? And I'm thinking, what do you mean what happened to me? I'm here. She said, no, I said, you're, you're doing good. See, I had a visit with God. I had a visit with God. God don't even, he don't care about my time frame most of the time. I'm the one that puts the time problems on it, aren't you? Ray and I have had some strong talks, and, 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 and I told him if I ever go to another church that has sunrise services, I want the sunrise service on Easter Sunday to be after, after morning worship. Some of you get that, some of you don't. The good soldier is determined to live for the Lord no matter what the cost. And sometimes it is costly. Shared with you, and I use too many of my examples, but they're so important. Before we accepted Jesus, we went out, we partied, we drank, we carried on. We had a lot of people that liked us, a lot of people that wanted to hang out with us and all on the weekends. We bought, we bought some of the liquor and some of the beer. And we went to the places and we encouraged it and all. We accepted Jesus, and after a little while, guess what? Those people began to go away. They didn't want anything else to do with us. We were different. We weren't part of that anymore. Some of them are still friends. No matter the cost, we're to serve God. I want you to turn to Luke with me. And it'll be Luke 22, and we'll read there in a minute. In the military, 
we talked about all these things and five traits and there's all kinds of different traits you could you could use and all these are just some that I saw that somebody else had written that I chose to use but the military is good on memorials they're good on <coughs> they're good on things to remember the good things that happen some of the bad things that happen I think that Christ did something extraordinary I want to talk just a moment about this and I'll be on 22 verse 15 and he said unto them with desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer for I say unto you that will not eat any more thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. He took the cup and he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. He took the bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and gave unto them saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of of me. He went on to explain to him that the cup is the New Testament, the blood. Christ wanted us to remember that he died. But he also wanted us to remember, as you read it, that he's coming back. I talked about this the very last time I preached. Jesus will return. We went, we gathered up before Cindy's back got bad. We went to all these places and got flowers for, for, for some of the kids and for the grandparents and for the parents. And it's hard to get flowers anymore if you wait until the last minute. We, we went up to the cemetery and everything. And I got the thing. I told Randy, I was going to preach on this, and the Lord changed my mind. We don't have to put flowers on Jesus' grave. Jesus isn't in that grave anymore. He fought the battle for us. He won supreme. He reigned supreme. And he will come back supreme as the king of kings and the lord of lords. And when we think about, about this, he said, as oft as you do this, do this as a remembrance of him. So we think back about Jesus, about his life, about his death, his burial, his resurrection, knowing, knowing that we're in a fight to the death with him. Aren't you glad tonight that you're on the Lord's side? Aren't you glad tonight that you're in church, standing solid with, with our brothers and sisters in arms? The Bible, the Word, prayer, the helmet of salvation. Aren't you glad that we love each other and can lift each other up? And I want to tell you what, when you put us together and the power of the Holy Ghost just moving among us, nothing on this earth shall stop the power of God. Father, we love you. And God, we attempted in a, what we believe to be a unique way to present how important you are. And the God that we're, we're to be soldiers following after you. God, we don't ever want to be AWOL. We don't want to be away from our post. We want to have our weapons cleaned and old and ready to go. God, we want the Holy Spirit to be real. That, Lord, that we acknowledge and and, and, and accept and utilize the full power of your spirit. God, we thank you for Jesus, Lord, and, and how he shed his life. And God, we know, we know there's a giant, giant spiritual warfare going on. We can just look at this land and this country. But God, we know because we read your word, we know what your word says. We know that we will be overcomers. That God, we know that Satan will lose. So we thank you, we lift you up, we give you glory and honor, and we just simply salute you tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Oh, I got five more minutes. <laughs>